Hi, welcome back. Uh, today is going to be the uh, last session on uh, object oriented design. We are in part four of object oriented design. Uh, this is Balu here from SP Tech Bangalore. So I'll just take you through the uh, session objectives. Now today we are going to focus on two points. One is we are going to see an example of an object oriented design and we are also going to see how to identify classes and objects in a given scope of study or we'll take that as a case study. We are going to actually look into a case study and see how we can use that case study in order to identify classes and objects for the further design and implementation process. Now the case study I'm going to consider here is called as a simple employee management system. So you know what is an employee management system? It is basically a system which will manage all the employees in terms of their payrolling, attendance, etc. Now let us consider an example where there is no such automated software in the organization as of now. So you have a current system. So in the current system, there are some activities which are going on. And what are the activities which are going on in the current system? As you can see, these activities are called as requirements. So when you actually start any software engineering uh, process or when you're actually starting any development process, the first thing you need to understand is you have to get the requirements from the customer or you have to get the requirements from the end users. So sometimes this end user also are called as stakeholders of the particular project. Now each end user will start giving you requirements and there are so many stakeholders or end users you need to meet and understand their requirements from their end. But to make this session short, I have not taken all the stakeholders into consideration. I have just taken few requirements only for the purpose of actually implementing that requirements into object oriented design. Now employees must be able to report login and logout time in the register. Now uh, generally what happens in uh, any employee management system is there will be a register. Now when an employee enters into the office, he actually puts a signature down that becomes his login time. And when he actually finishes his work, he goes out of the office. When he's going out, he's going to report his time, what time he has gone out. That is called as a logout time. Now the security should check the register and if he finds any of the employee has not made an entry, either login or logout time, then he has to mark the employee as absent. Now somebody is monitoring this uh, login and logout time of an employee. So the security is monitoring that and if the security finds that, you know, if an employee has not written his login time or he has forgotten to log return the logout time, then that employee will be marked out as absent. And at the end of the month, the accountant is actually going to take this register and he is going to calculate the total salary earned by an employee depending upon how many days he has worked. So this is the brief uh, scope of the uh, uh, project and uh, the project should also uh, provide the user with an employee ID. So what is an employee ID? It's an unique identification number given to an employee. So upon keying the employee ID, the employee should be able to retrieve all the details in terms of how many days he has worked or how many days he has taken leave or how many days he was absent. If he has done any overtime, then what is the wages allocated to the overtime and the salary should be calculated and the pay slip has to be printed. Now this is the basic uh, requirement of a simple employee management system. Now, how do you tackle this particular problem? Now, you have how understood the requirements. Now, once you have understood the requirements, what you need to do is now when the requirements are gathered by you, you have to basically identify two things. You identify nouns and verbs. Now, I have focused on this nouns and verbs in my earlier session as well. Now, nouns and verbs become the basic thing in entities are the basic entity for your object oriented design. Now, as you can see here, there's a one rule of thumb, which is very important. Identify actors of the system. Who are the actors? Actors are the people who are actually involved in that particular system. Now, if you can see from the uh, above case study, whatever we have actually learned so far, the actors would be an employee because the employee would be interacting with the system. An actor could be a security because the security is also involved with the system. Or an actor could be an accountant because an accountant will also be involved in a system. So these are called as actors. Now, identification of nouns and verbs become very important. Now, there are two types of uh, nouns in English, which you very well know. We call them as common nouns and proper nouns. Now, what is a common noun? Now, common noun is a noun which is very, very, very generic. See, for example, I'll give you car 
is a common noun whereas you know innova is a proper noun now innova is a specific noun whereas you know car is a common noun similarly here i can have a common noun called as an restaurant and i can say shanti sagar as a proper noun so a proper noun is very 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 exclusive whereas common noun is very generic now when you are identifying the actors you have to identify common nouns and proper nouns and what happens is all this common nouns becomes classes and proper noun becomes objects we shall see how you basically convert this uh, common noun into classes and proper noun into objects you will able to understand that when i take two or more three slides from this now here what i have done in this particular slide is i have identified three common nouns or three actors you have employees you have security and you have accountant now i have broken down the requirements in the bulleted points as you can see here employees must be able to report login and logout time in the register and the employees must be able to check his attendance and what the security should be able to do he should be able to check the register and if he finds any employee has not made an entry that is either login or logout time then he has to mark that employee as absent and finally an accountant should calculate the number of days the employee has worked and has to credit the salary to the employee's account now here what i have done i have identified three actors employee second one is the security and the third one is the accountant and i have identified some actions which are associated with all the three actors now what i have to do now is i have to convert this particular text format now the basically the requirements are being portrayed in the form of a text i have to convert this text format into an actual diagrammatical format which is actually approved by the unified modeling language we call it as uml and that diagram format is called an use case diagram so that is my step 2 in my object oriented design where i am going to draw an use case diagram so what is going to be there in a use case diagram you have got two things you will have an actor and you will have an action now employee is an actor and login details is an action that means how do you read this employee logs in details or employee is an actor and log out details is an action so employee logs out the details or employee puts down the details of his log out time and the employee can check his attendance now the combination of this actor and an action is called as an use case now apart from that the use case will also have the properties of this particular employee so every employee will have an employee name and every employee will have an employee id and every employee will have a bank account number so these are some of the properties of the employee and these are and login details log out details and check attendance are some of the actions associated with this particular actor employee so we have finalized one uh, actor called employee and the actions associated with employee similarly i have also identified two more actors which we have seen earlier one is called a security and the second one is called as an accountant now the security performs an action called make log entry and the accountant performs an action called calculate salary and credit salary so now we have identified three actors and we have identified some actions associated with all the three actors and we have drawn an use case diagram so drawing an use case diagram becomes the step 2 of your object oriented design now what do we do in step 3 now what we do in step 3 is we start writing the class diagrams so to write a class diagram the base what we have is called as a use case diagram now you can see on the right hand side i have a use case diagram where here the actor is an employee and there were three actions associated with that employee login details check attendance and log out details now what i have done i have created a class called employee and those employee class will have certain state or properties so what are the properties of an employee class it will have employee name employee id and bank account number and all these actions will become the implementation or the behavior of that particular employee class like login details check attendance and log out details so remember i told you earlier all your proper nouns are going to become actors and those actors are going to become classes now in this case the first common noun we identified was an employee so created an actor called an employee and that employee now has to become a class called employee and the characteristics of the employee and the behavior of an employee are put in this particular class employee now similarly here 
I have another two classes which we can define here. One is a security class and an accountant class. Similarly, security class would also have certain properties. Accountant class will also have certain properties. And the behavior or the implementation is make login, make log entry for the security class and calculate salary and credit salary for the accountant class. Now you created uh, three actors and you converted all the three actors into the classes and you identified the behavior and the properties of the classes. Now what you do in step four, you start creating objects. Now, I told you that to create an object you need proper nouns, not common nouns. Classes are common nouns where objects are proper nouns. For example, now I have three classes created here, employee class, security class and an accountant class. I say employee Suresh. Now Suresh is an object of the class employee. Mahesh is an object of the class security and Kiran is an object of the class accountant, which means that Suresh, Mahesh and Kiran are objects of the classes employee, security and accountant. So like this, you can create objects. I can have multiple objects as well. Let's not uh, limit to our uh, uh, understanding that when I say employee Suresh, Suresh is only the object of the class employee. No, you can have number of uh, objects for this employee class. Similarly, you can have number of objects for the security class and you can have number of objects for your accountant class. So like this, what we have done is first we have identified the problem. Then we have written down what are the actors in that particular problem in terms of uh, common noun. Then we converted the actors into class diagrams. Now before that, we also identified what are the actions associated with an actor. We drew an use case diagram, converted the use case diagram into class diagrams and we started creating objects for that particular classes and then further what we can do we can implement this class and objects in a programming language so you can implement either this in c plus plus or java or c sharp in whichever object oriented programming language you would want to implement so that's it uh, thank you to, for watching this particular video please subscribe for our uh, channel for more videos on object oriented design and don't forget us to like on our facebook page sptech bang i'll be back with more videos on software engineering till then take care bye bye